All right, I want to welcome everybody into a playback live. This is actually a five on the floor playback live. This is the first time that we're trying this. We're going to do this on the playback feed so that you can watch the highlights here. They're on mute. Also, you can comment here in the chat. We'll try to respond to some comments as we can. And then we're going to put this on the podcast feed also afterwards. So if you're listening to this on the podcast feed, that's why this sounds a little bit different than you typically hear with podcasts. We recommend that you subscribe to our playback room, which is playback.tv backslash 5RSN, or just go download the playback app for free and look for the five reasons room and you will find it. I've got Alex, I've got Brady, I've got Greg, the floor plan tonight. We're going to talk about the Miami Heat at a crossroads. What's actually going on with the Jimmy Butler situation? Handled this a little bit on playback yesterday. Do you want to mention two sponsors before we get started? Because again, we're doing this a little bit differently. Prize picks, make sure you use the code 5, F-I-V-E. It is legal again in the state of Florida. You get your initial deposit matched up to $100. You can play their new arena game, set your lineup. And again, you can still win big. Use the code 5. Also, make sure you download the Autograph app. That's where you can find all the Miami Heat content in one place. They are still giving away for 13 bucks a $500 value Bam Adebayo signed jersey a framed signed jersey they're giving it away by i believe five o'clock on the 31st so you've got a little bit more time for that so download the autograph app that is also free you don't have to put any money down for that use the code five and you will be eligible for that all right um just because we're doing this a little bit differently i'm going to take a show of hands here alex are you here yes Okay, I guess I should have actually turned on my volume. Alex, are you here? Yes. I thought we were handling this like a podcast. Is Ethan here? <laughs> I'm, I'm confused right now. You hear me now? We hear him. Yeah. I don't hear we him. hear you. I'll try this again. There we go. The headphones are on. This is going to sound like a podcast feed. This is exactly what goes on in the podcast version. So this is exactly. Thank you, Brady. All right, we've got Brady Hawk. You can follow me at Brady Hawk 305. Uh, Greg, you're here? Mike, check. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Greg Sylvander is where you can follow him. Tropical Blanket is where you can find Alex. I went to Alex first. I was not expecting him to be the first here, but he was. Uh, I want to thank everybody who's joining us in the chat here. We've got Donut, Dan, Dolphin Slayer, Jose, OGs, Sean Rochester. We don't really count him. Sneaker God, Heat Fan, uh, Jay, and others. All right. This is the topic tonight. Okay. We're going to talk about Jimmy. I've got the highlights up here. There's a lot of panic in Heat World. I'll just ask you this question, Greg, before we start. Is there any scenario where trading Jimmy Butler is the best option? No, not at all. I don't think so. I think that we're overthinking this. I think that he stays in Miami and they ultimately figure it out. Um, trading him would feel the worst of all the options. Even if you talk about them getting another star or something like that, if you want to go down those roads and fantasize about that, it's still it would leave a bad taste in my mouth to lose Jimmy Butler. Alex, is there any scenario where trading Jimmy Butler is the best option? Is there any number of picks that you could acquire or players that would make it worth it? Unfortunately, yeah, I do think there's a there's a scenario. I'm not rooting for the scenario, of course. Um, I, you know what I mean. I, I think they should just pay Jimmy, give him the extra year, give him the extension. Um, but to me, if you're not going to do that, if the Heat have qualms about doing that, I, I think that's the best move. I think going into the season with a cloud over the, the team. And then, you know, you, you risk letting him walk in the summer for absolutely nothing back. Like that is worst case scenario. I don't want to see him traded, but I think just logically, if, if you know, which I'm sure they know, as you guys have said, like, if you don't extend him, he's probably going to opt out or, or, you know what I mean? Like next summer, I just think you avoid that scenario and, you know, you're risking, ending the Jimmy Butler window by not extending him in the first place. And, and I know they're going to say like, you know, we gave him the first extension whenever that was, but mm. you know, it doesn't just end there, right? Like he's still on your team. He's still going to want to get paid. He just got him to the final last year and has played like a top 10 player and wants to get paid like one for one extra year. I think doing that is, it, it, that's what I want to happen. That's what I think they should do if they want to, you know, continue this contention window. But if they're not going to extend him, I think you have to trade him. I, I don't think you just let go into the next season and, you know, with this elephant in the room where, where we're all like, you know, wondering what's going to happen when we know it's probably going to end badly. Like we've seen this before. The crazy part about this is it's actually the opposite of what's going on with Donovan Mitchell in Cleveland, where Cleveland is basically saying, here, please take our extension. We want to extend you. 
But if you don't take it, we'll trade you. This is actually the opposite. This is, we're not really sure we want to give you the extension. We don't have to give you the extension now. We can wait until uh, July 9th or whatever it is, or July 7th. We can decide then. We can decide next year. And then you can decide what you want to do with it. I'm just going to set the table on this because I've talked about this on podcast before I get to Brady. Um, and I've talked about it on playback last night. I still think the two most likely scenarios are either they extend him or he comes to camp, he plays out the season, and then he walks. He can get a three-year contract after this season. Provided he doesn't get hurt, there will be teams that have interest in it. Obviously, over the past 24 hours, some stuff has come out that actually I've reported before. Um, I, I said that, again, there were teams that were interested in giving him a max. I know, you know, again, Anthony's a very good reporter. Respect his reporting on this, and I thought he brought a very good synopsis of the whole situation. The only real difference that came out of that from what we've been saying is this idea that Jimmy wants a max from someone this summer. That's not something I had heard in the wake of Riley's comments. So that is a little bit new, but there was a feeling that there were teams out there that would be willing to give Jimmy Butler the max, and I can tell you that those teams – and you can call this tampering or not tampering, they reached out to Jimmy's camp in the wake of Pat's comments. I think everybody around the league was surprised by how strong Pat went. And basically it was, hey, if, if they won't max him, we will. That's kind of how the conversations went. Okay, so again, not a surprise that there would be teams that would be interested in doing this. And there could be teams after this season, but Jimmy would probably have to play really well, which would benefit the Heat. He'd probably have to stay very available and very healthy to be able to get that kind of three-year max extension, which again would benefit the Heat. So I'll go to you, this on you because I think you feel the strongest, even stronger than Greg. Is there any way, Brady Hawk, that you would trade Jimmy Butler? That I would trade Jimmy Butler? No. But I think this, like, this isn't the Damian Lillard situation where – it's not in their hands where they don't know what the next move is. So it's all like hypotheticals. Like, no, this is all in Miami's hands. Like if they feel like they're not giving him an extension right now under any circumstances, then there is a way that they should trade him. Because if, if you just said there's two options here, it's either they extend him or he plays this out and he's probably going to end up leaving and going and getting an extension elsewhere. So if you're sitting here, if, if Miami city are saying, okay, under no circumstance, we are not going to budge. And this is all this is when you say about like, Teams were reaching out to Jimmy's camp and things getting put out there constantly. This is just going to be a, a tennis match all offseason. They're just going to keep going back and forth, even though we know Jimmy does want to be here. Uh, it is all in Miami's hands. So if they feel like there's no situation where they're going to do it, then it feels like they, they're kind of forced into that. Because, look, you, we could sit here and say, like, yeah, he's going to go play one last season like crazy mm -hmm. and then leave. But, like <laughs> – we know Jimmy where it's like if he if he knows like this is it, like if he has like a, a brick wall on the other side of this season, it's like, okay, I'm just going to play just to play. And then after this, I'm leaving. I just don't see that being good for either side. I don't see that making sense for Jimmy because he, we talk about so often this whole Jimmy tenure has been, okay, is this the last season we're going to get this Jimmy? Is this the last time you're going to get this prime version of himself in a heat uniform? Is he going to waste another year just so he can walk into the offseason and get his money? Maybe, but I don't know. I don't see it. So it doesn't make sense really from, from either side when you look at it like that. But this is so different from all the other offseason talks we had where it's like Miami, it's a waiting. For Miami side, front office-wise, it's a waiting game. This really it isn't. It's really up to them. It's their decision to be made, and, and, and they can kind of play the cards how they feel like they want to. Well, the only the only reason I would say there is a little bit of a waiting game in the sense of you know seeing what's out there and what kind of build you want. and. Uh, there, I am reading the comments as they're coming in here. And a couple of people have asked about pivoting to the BAM timeline, Greg. Like uh, Donovan Mitchell is, again, we don't know if Donovan Mitchell is going to be available, if he's going to take that extension. But Donovan Mitchell is more on BAM's timeline than Jimmy is. It's just a fact. They're the same age. They have a strong friendship. Um, could a case be made in any sense to pivot around the two of them? You accumulate as many assets as you can for Jimmy, and you, you go get Donovan. You go get Donovan. And, and and part of this is when Barry suggested this today, people are like, you know, and I, I think even Sean said this, uh, it's tough enough, you know, to make one superstar trade, but to combine them in the same trade these yeah. days seems almost impossible. But I mean, could you make a case that that makes sense? That's the best case scenario if things don't work out with Jimmy. Like if you can't come to some sort of agreement with Jimmy Butler and you have to flex that muscle and trade him, then getting Donovan Mitchell and resetting the timeline around Bam, that's the way to go. But 
it would be a consolation prize ultimately if it doesn't involve Jimmy Butler as well. But yeah, it's viable. Um, I also think that there could be ways that you could build around Jimmy and Bam making other trades that would be equally as interesting to the to the rest of the team. But for now, it looks like people are honed in on Donovan Mitchell. I think we're getting ahead of ourselves there. Mm. So for me, this is about retaining Jimmy Butler. Um, and I, I don't see that this is going to get dr drawn out either. I think that this is something that gets resolved relatively early, um, but maybe I'll be wrong there. Well, here's the other point. Sean makes it here in the comments. I might be one of the top five assets Philadelphia has available at a Jimmy trade. Paul Reed and three mid-tier first isn't moving anyone. And that, I think, is what's being missed here, Alex. They don't really have anything, Philadelphia. And that's why I keep coming back to uh, not Anthony's report, okay? Because And I know, Brady, you said this may be going back and forth all summer. I really don't think that's the intention of Butler's camp. I don't. Jimmy might troll a little bit on social media, but that's not the kind of agent that we're dealing with here. I, I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of that. I think this is merely a case of Anthony had information and he was rolling it all into one story. And so it came out then. I don't think this is going to be drip, 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 drip the whole summer. Again, except for the stuff that Jimmy's going to do on his IG, that's going to be interpreted a certain way. But I do think the thing with Philadelphia here um, is that again, Anything that's being generated related to them and was put out through Keith Pompey, who's a beat writer there, to me, it just screams Daryl Morey. Like th this, and from the very beginning, it has for everybody else, even before Riley made his comments, like Riley actually leaned into, I think, what Morey was trying to do here uh, by making this more of a controversy. But it's clear he's trying to muck things up for Miami and show that they have, so they, there is a team that will give him an extension. I did see the report. Um, from, from Keith, I know he was on lockdown, I believe, where he said uh, some of the effect of that they believe they made a mistake with Jimmy Butler. Well, duh. I mean, Tobias Harris over me. Um, and Josh Harris was part of that. The ownership, the owner at the t was, a, was the owner at the time. I know it wasn't Elton Brand's decision necessarily not to give Jimmy the extra year. But, I mean, can you make any case for Philadelphia having anything that would be enough to offer Miami, let alone a third team, to make a deal like this work, Alex? Well, that's the thing. I think Philadelphia would really just come into play um, if, again, like what I mentioned before, if the Heat were to decide this summer we're not extending him and we're trading it, which I'm not expecting because of everything you said. Um, and I think it would have to be that type of scenario um, because, I, I, like, what you said is is completely true, by the way, when it comes to Maury. It, it's, all, all of this screams Maury, and, and we've been seeing the reports about them wanting a forward for months now like it's it's just come out over and over and over through different guys and you've heard it a lot of times about paul george and then you think back also to you know not just jimmy's relationship with Embiid and him playing for philly before but daryl Morey going hard after him when he was managing the houston rockets and when they had chris paul and james harden they were trying to add jimmy to that team and i remember that was something that they were going hard after so it, it makes a lot of sense that he's trying he's gunning for one of those two guys and he's doing everything he can in the media. This is how we've seen him operate before. It's not surprising. And and look, and whatever Jimmy's agent is contributing to this, he's just doing his job, man. He's trying to get his superstar paid. You know, you would think that Jimmy's play um, would get him that extra year, but I guess we're not at that point, right? But going back to the question when it comes to Philly, like um, if you do decide that you're going to trade him, you'd imagine there's going to be other, you know, teams who can offer more. And, you know, you, you guys have mentioned – you know, OKC or Houston, just kind of like young teams who still have a lot in their draft cupboard and are kind of trying to add another guy so that they can compete. Obviously, they're on, you know, OKC is much closer, but just teams like that, right? I don't know, Memphis, New Orleans, just young teams who might want to get in the mix and think that a guy like that can really help them. Um, I, I think you can probably get more. But and I think Killer here mentioned in the chat, like getting three first round picks and two pick swaps from the Sixers would be extremely depressing him sending him to Philly. But if that's the only offer you're getting, I think that is much better than just letting him walk for next summer. Even if those uh, Sixers picks are going to be in the twenties, I think the heat have done so much like throughout the years where reloading some of that, even if they're not great picks is a good option. I just, you know, that's again, in a scenario where nobody else comes into the picture and Philly is like the only team, right? I think that's what you settle for. And so all of this just makes me think, you know, it's not going to happen. I don't think he's going to end up on the Sixers, and hopefully I'm not jinxing it here. I just think, you know, 
I, I expect him to get paid by the Heat. And if he doesn't, I think there will be other teams who could offer more. I don't think the Heat would want to send him to Philly. And so all of this just feels like we're getting ahead of ourselves and people kind of being reactionary to today's news. And, you know, it's a good thing they've got us to address it, I guess. Well, I, I think part of what's happening, too, is it's getting addressed nationally because there's a vacuum because the playoffs haven't been all that interesting, actually. And and, and I, th- I feel like, especially what's happened in the Eastern Conference with Boston, and so now some of the shows, you know, the ESPN shows, et cetera, are starting to focus on this a little bit. I, the Heat are not going to provide information. They're not going to fuel this. Uh, it, Pat said what he said. They're not going to say anything else. Um, they may try to massage some of the messaging behind the scenes, but th- there's not going to be anything coming out of their camp. And again, I just don't think that uh, – that Bernie Lee is the type uh, to to really press the issue here. And he has too much respect for this organization. I've heard it, honestly, and I'll just say this flat out, I've heard it from him uh, ever since Jimmy signed, and I don't think any of that has changed. I don't think he wants a negative relationship with this organization. Uh, this is not Minnesota. This is not you know some of the others around the league, and I'm talking about Minnesota prior um, to them kind of getting their act together. So I, I don't think you're going to hear any of that. And so I, I think that you know this will quiet a little bit. Um, and I think it's going to come back again to, you know, July 7th uh, and whether or not they're going to be prepared to give him an extension. I think that's when this is all going to bubble up. And, and you know, my, my feeling on this is, is here. What is okay? the deadline, by the way? Uh, we'd have to check. Greg, do you know the deadline offhand? I know they can't offer it until uh, until July 7th. But do you know when they have until to offer it until? I do not. I'd have to follow up with that information. I I, I think it's they have yeah, the might, calendar might the year. year. Yeah, I, the next league year, right? Is what I would. Yeah, think. I, I believe they'd have that right. entire year to work it out. Okay. So, all right. So again, this could hang over everything. Now we talked last year about like how Tyler Hero was going to come to camp, right? After being thrown in the trade machine all summer, and other things that happened and not getting Dame. Um, Brady, how do you think Jimmy would handle it? You've been around Jimmy enough now. He doesn't get the extension first day of training camp. How do you think he'll handle it? Like what outfit will he walk in with? <laughs> well, maybe. I, well, it better not be the emo thing again. Cause I I've said no, this, that that, 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 there, there, there are, there are two things apparently that pissed Pat off this year. And that was one of them. Uh, yeah, it was the, e- maybe it was have, the like, emo thing. Empty pockets. I don't know. There's pockets out or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> something like that. Um, but like I said before, I mean, it, it w- does seem like it would be a bit awkward because you're in a situation where if from his mindset, it's like, okay, I'm going to play out this last season and then leave after what was just said from Pat Riley, where he was talking about, you need to play more in the regular season. So it's like this battle of like, okay, am I going to like overdo it this regular season to please this team that I'm going to probably end up signing an extension elsewhere. It just feels weird to talk about. Cause I didn't think we'd be here this quickly to turn and turn around and start talking about, these Jimmy situations, but it is reality. It is what what a certain hypothetical that could happen. But that's why it's two things at once. It's the extension thing, and it's the things that were said uh, pertaining to the regular season. Usually it's like when we had to talk conversations with Tyler, mm-hmm. it was like, okay, Tyler, once he gets past media day, it's like, okay, well, the next time he has to prove himself is the playoffs. So right. there's months and months of time in between there where things settle down and things get to a certain point. Like, no. With the Jimmy situation – it would be on high blast because after what, what just happened after the outfit he walks in with on media day and then the game one of the regular season to see the level he's playing at, it's everything's going to be under a microscope. So that's why I think things could be could get a little awkward for this team. Um, I mean, suppose the right guy, I guess, to handle it. And I get, I guess they could figure it out. But ideally, I mean, we've been through this before. We've seen <laughs> with the, with the Dwayne situation, what this could end up looking like. And it just feels like you look at this and like, just, you just do not want it to get to that point. With the things that have happened, you do not want a sour taste in your mouth from this era in it to end like this. It, it just feels like it, it could it could get ugly. I know, Ethan, you're saying it's it's very likely that it doesn't get to that point where it's things are, are handled in the right way. But I think it, you just don't want the end result uh, just being being a negative one, being a, kind of that being the last memory you get. So it will be interesting, the July 7th thing, to see how they handle it. And look, maybe maybe we are we're overanalyzing the, the Jimmy side. But what if we start overanalyzing the, the Miami side? What if that was just kind of just to like play the field a little bit and then they do just end up giving the extension and we move on and nothing else happens? Like it's very possible that we, we could overlook that one too. Yeah, it is possible. I'll, I'll say this. Um, I'm going to counter something I've said before that you've quoted. Uh, I, I don't think Jimmy's going to make it 
uh, you know, ugly in camp. I, I, I don't. I, I, but, but I will say this: their relationships with their best players have never ended well. I mean, and and that's probably true for most franchises, Greg. But we we've talked about it on the podcast. Like, it didn't end well with Shaq, right? It didn't end well the first time with Dwayne. They they got a reprieve on that. Uh, it didn't end well with Bosch, although that was not their fault. They were trying to do the right thing. He just didn't understand it at the time. LeBron. Uh, it, it didn't end well with LeBron. It didn't end well with Timmy at the end. No. Uh, it, it, on it, white it, side. It, 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 well, with Assad, to, I knew you'd throw that in with bees, either of the three times. No, uh, it, it didn't, it didn't end well with Zoe the first time around. Um, you know, everybody, you know, Zoe again is at Pat's side and has been for the past few years, but people forget Zoe Summer Groove. I was there. Uh, he gave a speech there before again, he, he left the franchise or was, was I guess it was a trade, right? It was a trade to Jersey initially. Mm -hmm. Um, and and uh, there are a lot of people who thought like Zoe was really ungrateful for everything that Mickey and others had done. I mean, if you remember, uh, Zoe went to the Olympics and or and Mickey gave him a plane to come back. I, I was at the airport waiting for Zoe to come back. There was a group of us in media. And then it wasn't that long after that that it seemed like Zoe had forgotten everything they'd done for him because, again, they came down to a, a dispute. Now, Zoe came back, thankfully, um, came back, accepted his role behind Shaq, played a huge role in the championship, and he's still a pillar of the franchise and always will be. But I'm just saying, like, it does not typically end well. It didn't – It didn't. I mean, Dragic, it was okay, right? It was kind of understood. Jimmy wanted his guy, even though Dragic was also his guy. But you talk about their top ten players in history, and even, even – the the big three uh compliments the little 12 right mario chalmers wasn't happy at the end he was asking me when these mfers are going to let him know what the hell's going on mike miller was amnestied wasn't happy about it i was there the night that it happened okay i was at a function at his his house uh uh shane battier was kind of unhappy the entire last year ray wasn't talking to spo for most of the last season that's just what happens in these in these deals, right? It only ended well for for uh, for UD, pretty much, right? So, I mean, it wouldn't be a huge surprise if it doesn't end well with Jimmy Butler. They've been down this road before, and ultimately they survived it, even though it required them overpaying a whole bunch of guys in 2017, right? And uh, and to a certain degree in 2016 when Dwayne left uh, to make that happen. I mean, th this entire situation with Jimmy especially with his temperament, I think, yeah, you're right. It, anything can happen. And it, I think that it's probably pretty customary across the league that you see that the end of a long tenure generally doesn't end beautifully. And so I, I, I don't read too much into that from the organizational perspective, like that they have some sort of issue with guys exiting. I think it's just when you're around each other for a while, you get tired of each other and you eventually want to move on. And, and that's just the nature of that business. But it does mean that there's a possibility that you could come to an end of a relationship with Jimmy Butler. And at that point, I mean, everybody that, that has spoke tonight besides me about the fact that Jimmy Butler would be, um, like trading him would be viable. You're right. I get that. I just, I still don't think it's going to get there. I think that they're going to come to an agreement. Um, and I think that they offer the extension. That's where I'm at today. We'll see where I'm at tomorrow. But right now I think that they offer the extension. All right. In the last uh, five minutes of this, we're going to take some of the actual questions and comments here. So we're going to do that again, a little bit different, putting this on the podcast feed. I do want to mention our two sponsors again, uh, prize picks, use the code five, get your initial deposit matched up to $100. We do, we ask you guys, if you can do this, if you want to play, do it. It uh, You can make some money, and also it helps the network. So go to Prize Picks, use the code 5FIVE, F -I -V -E, autograph, download the app, get in on that BAM contest. They give away tickets there, all kinds of stuff. They also got other teams if you're a fan of an NFL team, et cetera. You can check them out in, in addition to the Heat content. So go to autograph, excuse me, go to autograph on the Google Play Store, the Apple App Store, or autograph.io. Download the app for free. Use the code 5. Um, this one comes in from Sean. I'll miss Ernie, honestly. Um, I, that is actually a factor, you know, people around the players start to talk and I, everybody's going to be reading into all of that stuff. And obviously that's one person who likes to talk a lot and people assume he's speaking, uh, for Jimmy. All right, let's take some questions here. Anybody have some questions? Uh, Technicolor, I'll give this one to Alex to a certain extent. 
Do we feel like we're falling for the more a trap? Should be a non-story. Alex. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, <laughs> boomer <laughs> moment. Yeah, I think that's what's happening here. You know, I think he he's playing his game. And um, like I mentioned earlier, people on Twitter and others just kind of seeing Jimmy's name being thrown out there with the scenario of him ending up on a conference rival just gets you feeling a certain way. And I don't blame him. You know, not everybody knows what's going on behind the scenes. Not everybody knows or thinks to know that it's Maury in the background, most likely. I, I You know, it's fine. People are not going to feel good with, you know, their star player's name being thrown out there in national media um, and seeing it on like Dunk Central, right? Like I, I understand kind of the, I guess, the emotional pushback there with Heat fans. And it's like, how are you letting this happen again? I completely get it. I think it feels like, and, and you've talked about this, you know, over the years, Ethan, when, around the time it happened, that they were kind of repairing their image after the way that, you know, it ended with other stars. So to be back here again, I think, they got to make a decision. I really do think that. And it's much easier said than done, right? Like then to, to just say, you know, either extend him now or you press the the, the button to trade him. Like it's it's not as easy as that, right? It would, it, it would be a process. And I don't think they want to get there. I think they want to keep this Jimmy thing going. And, you know, whoever in the front office has like qualms about bringing him back, there's logical reason right to have qualms about bringing him back but if you're just talking about giving him an extra year in my opinion i don't think the cost is like it's going to sink you for the next five years you're not signing him till he's 40. he's still an all-star level player i understand he's not giving you you know playoff jimmy um production in the regular season but he's still an impact player it's not like you know he, he's been on this insane decline where he's not anywhere near where he was before you know we're probably at the start of the decline that's probably what we witnessed this season you know, after the injuries that he's sustained, all the wear and tear he's had over his career, I don't think this injury that happened, um, you know, in the Sixers playing game was a wear and tear injury, by the way, just for some people kind of, you know, in the comments implying that his conditioning program through the season where he paces himself and it's a marathon, not a sprint, didn't work because he got injured. He fell on somebody's foot. He landed on yeah. somebody's foot. That's you know that happens in basketball. It's not a well. Ty Tyler thing. Tyler didn't get the benefit of the doubt for that. So let, let's just be. I, I'm with you, but let's let's be fair on that, right? Like when no, Tyler I, stepped on somebody's foot, everybody called him brittle. Well, we tried to we tried including to Pat, about it. I guess fragile, fragile, right? fragile. Sorry, yeah, fragile. <laughs> but no, I, like I think I think it's just that that's it. Like you, you make the decision, and I, I think they want to keep competing with him. I think he is their type of guy, and even though it hasn't been like perfect and, and you've talked about it how you know he's kind of been tough for them to deal with they've you know compromised and changed some of their ways i guess I, like i just think yeah, like letting it end now because of one year on top of what he's already making and you know also him getting a raise on the last year like i, I just think it's not enough to sever this whole relationship and after all, like a decade of you rebuilding your image and you know, sever your contention status, frankly. Like, I know people think they're not a contender now, but what do you think they're, they're going to be if they let Jimmy walk? Uh, this comes in from Jonathan McNamara. Let me go to Brady on this one. Feels like this team just needs to learn how to play loose together. How could they get that to happen? New talent. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the way you do it. I mean, they, they there's a reason that they play in that fashion. It's because there's just not that that freshness to this team. It, it feels stale. Uh and Rozier was that for, for you know, a second half of the season was supposed to be that, but they never got healthy. So it, you can never really even fully say. But, I, it, like, if you were to hype – and I hate how we keep using Donovan Mitchell as an example because it's just the easiest example and he's probably going to end up extending and we're going right. to do the Dean thing again. But, like, if you were to get a guy like that into the fold, like, there is a freshness to it. Like, everybody, you play a different style. You can open up the offense in a different way than you were playing it before. Everybody starts to kind of just just feel like there's a, a different group in that locker room. And you do start to play, I think, a little bit looser. But when you come back to training camp with the way that we kind of, I think, all have a gut feeling we're going to see this training camp look like, it just kind of feels inevitably like there is a little bit of a, of a tight group on the floor. Because there is, like... How are you expect to be loose when it's like, okay, Tyler in the back of his head is like, I need to overperform in the playoffs. Jimmy now has this thing where he has to like overperform the regular season. Bam has to try to figure out how to like 
play less games instead of more. He has to try to like balance out the season over the course because he has so much on his plate. And be the it, captain, which he hates, by the it, way. It, <laughs> that's a <laughs> high level one as well. But it does. It just feels like there's just so much going on that, that it's hard to play loose. Like think about because I think that is an interesting word when you ask that que- the person asked that question when they use the word loose because like that's what made the 2020 regular season I felt like so different than mm-hmm. the others was there's the freshness of a new Jimmy Butler and the way they played in that regular season and I guess the bubble as well could count into that. Uh, they just played like a different loose offensive style. Those are it, they just did. They were just free. Uh, and they just didn't have these like overarching narratives across the team, which I think does play a little bit. Of, I'm not a narrative guy, but I think it does play a little bit of a part, like all the stuff we're talking about in this offseason. So how do they do it? I mean, a new look roster, I think, would help it a little bit. But I think that's that's just a tough thing to ask for. It feels like right now. I asked Brady the narrative question. I never do that. Uh, sloppy <laughs> seconds here. Uh, we love the names that come in here. Greg, if Jimmy does ask for a trade, do you trade him to his preferred destination or go the Cronin route? You'd never go the Joe Cronin route. <laughs> route or what if it's route. Philly? Um, what if it's Philly? I think that you have to listen to all offers. You have to, but, and I think you need to approach with due diligence, but also you got to operate with peace. Like people aren't going to take Jimmy on if it's not going to be a scenario that he wants to be in. So I just think you need to consider that because that's going to make teams bid adequately. So to me, you kind of have to work with his preferred destinations just because of the kind of personality he is. All right. I'll let any of you guys take this one. And we appreciate everybody who joined here on playback. I, I forgot to put it on Twitter until about halfway through. So hopefully some of you uh, caught this on Twitter as well. We're going to do these weekly. Um, here's one that came in a little earlier. I can't remember who put it in. Uh, so I'll let any of you guys answer this. Although I kind of feel like Alex is the one who, who would least want to answer this. Would Butler, Embiid, and Maxi, with almost nothing yeah, else on yeah. the roster, be favorites in the East? Anybody want to take it? The silence is telling. <laughs> I think that's that got Alex written all over it. This is a Heat podcast. What are we doing here? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just asking the question. No, they Somebody wouldn't because the Philadelphia will always find a way to screw it up. Always. Oh. I mean, they almost didn't screw it up with Jimmy, though, Greg. He was the best. I mean, they had that that time. It was what? It was Simmons, Embiid, and Jimmy, right? Maxie's better than Simmons. This is true. And I, I have no like data to MVP. back up what I'm saying. I mean, they also had some bias on the team then, although like, I'm sure and, Philly fans wish won they had. MVP since he left. Like, he became a better player, too. Not that I'm a Joel guy. Like, that would be. Right, but as Mr. Chino 1996 says, yeah, but Joel was also younger, which is true, and healthier. I, well, yeah, he's, he's never been, been in the playoffs every year. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what age. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Every year. That's true. By the way, uh, like I'm just going to say it now. Like, hold me accountable if, if it ends up happening. Jimmy's not going to end up on the Sixers, so I don't want to keep doing this scenario. No, I, I I actually agree with you. I think I, you know, you know what I think would be the dark horse for Jimmy? I think Houston. Like you mentioned, when Morey was there before, he's not there now, obviously. It's different, different management. But uh, I, I look at a team like Houston that would make a lot of sense for him. Now, people are mentioning Warriors. I've seen OKC. I could see either. But I kind of feel like you put him on a team uh, that's ascending like that, that might be willing to kind of has some guys to carry during the regular season and allow him to just get to the playoffs. I'll also say players like playing in Houston. I know I'm doing too much right now, but that they feel to me like the dark horse team. I don't really know. They seem like they're trying to accelerate their build, right, Greg? Like it feels like they are. They want to move now. I mean, they they got closer to the play I think, than anybody anticipated. The West is going to be a bloodbath next year. Now you're adding Memphis back to it. I, um, I think the Knicks are a dark horse. Tibbs and the Knicks. Oh, my God. Uh, it could be. I, I, will say, dark. I, I, I will say this about the Knicks. Uh, he still does respect Tibbs. He he will, you know, my understanding is he believes Spoh is the best coach he's ever had. Still believes that, um, even if they don't always get along on everything. But uh, but I do know that there's a good relationship between Bernie and Tibbs and, and there's still a good personal relationship between Jimmy and Tibbs. So um, and if you're a guy that's just done 12 commercials and appeared in Bad Boys Four, New York is not the worst place to be after that. Um, they got but Jimmy I, Butler, but we got Jamal Kane. <laughs> 
That's a great way to close. Everybody's asking if he gets Sangoon in the package. I, I'll say this. Um, God, Sangoon, is, Sangoon is a sore spot uh, for Greg and I because we're in a fantasy basketball <laughs> keeper league. Did we get outbid by $1 for him? Really? Like you and I waited the entire draft for him because it's a, it's a bid. It's an auction league, right? We, we waited. I didn't want to bring him up. I was like, okay, let's just wait, 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 wait. We lost him by a buck, right? I didn't I know think. what I was doing, so uh... – that, I was no help. That that was it. All right. Well, I was no help at the beginning of this episode, but we hope that you guys enjoyed it. We do our we do some of these on on YouTube. We're going to continue to do that, but we want to use this platform a little bit more. I also want to say tomorrow on playback. Um, so download the playback app if you're Dolphin fans. The inside leverage guys are going to be there to review Dolphins OTAs, and then Friday, Eternal Matt, um, I think Adele, others uh, from the crew are going to be going back through previous heat drafts. We're going to do this on the podcast also, but they're going to start the process on playback. So that's starting Friday night at 830. Thanks, guys. Everybody appreciate you joining. Um, we are going to put this on the podcast feed. So for those of you who are late, I see this in the comments. It's going to go on the podcast feed. I don't know how it's going to sound, but it's going to go on the podcast feed. All right. Prize picks, autograph, download. Both with the code five. Have a good one, everybody.